My Adventures with Superman is an Adult Swim animated series streaming on Max, which kicked off its first season July 7, 2023. On this podcast, we discuss the most recent installments of a different series every show. My Adventures with Mad Science is the title of the sixth episode. We'll be breaking down. It's August 9th, and you're listening to today's episode. So this was pitched as a rom-com with punching. Obviously, you have the Lois Lane, a Clark Kent love story. You also have Jimmy Olsen in, in as a main character in this show. And then you also have the anime uh, video game um, X comics like way back in the day. All supposed to merge into this like one show for kids. I would say that this is anime crossed with kind of the Saturday morning cartoon. Mm-hmm. Right? Cause yeah, it's, it's like- supposed to be like if DC is too violent for kids, if the Zack Snyder cut is too violent for a certain age, this won't be. But it will still introduce kids to really cool well, stories. that was actually leads into my first question. What's going on with DC right now? Because people go after Marvel and rightfully so for multiple different reasons. But the big one is the multiverse. It's so big and like a lot of the stories that they focus on. We just finished Secret Invasion a couple days ago in season one. And I, looking back, I might have rated that pilot too highly. But then you look at DC and it just seems like it's a mess right now. You had Shazam 2 Fury of Gods, which was like a box office disappointment. Mm-hmm. The Flash, which is one of the biggest box office bombs of all time. And then you have a ton of different, like, Batmans. You have Robert Pattinson, you have Ben Affleck, and Michael Keaton. They just got rid of everyone's favorite Superman, Henry Cavill. It just seems like you have the DCEU and the MCU, and both of them are just don't really know where to go right now. Well, it's funny that you say everyone's favorite Superman, because this was also supposed to incorporate, like, the 1970s uh, early Christopher Reeves. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I know he wasn't in his 20s when he started, but, like, these are supposed to be interns at the Daily Planet. It's almost like... It is the Daily Planet. I'm not confusing that with the spider-man one right because no I, that, I, that spider-man one's the daily, daily bugle. profit oh, okay. bugle. this okay. is the daily planet and i watched the 1990 superman animated series but i was really thinking back to cartoon network and i realized that the real like cartoon superhero that i watched a lot of was batman hmm. like way back in the day you had batman the animated series batman beyond batman the brave and the bold that's Teen what Titans. i was what that well i'm talking about like batman but specifically. He, yeah but he was in that right he was also with batman beyond he wasn't in that he was just kind of a side character in that and then the same thing with teen titans he's a side character in that well not only that you had cartoon network i remember premiering i think during adult swim things like batman gotham knight and justice league the new frontier and it was like every single time it came back from commercial break i remember it was always tv 14 but i watched watched those when those premiered and then when i was older i also watched the batman animates uh like the batman anime movies like batman year one and under the red I get hood it. you're trying to justify why you're allowed to watch this show and you're not a kid <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, know, was... I understand that i i, I did want to ask to start this off if you wanted to talk about the cast first the plot first the predictions that you had the comparisons but it sounds like you want to start with the superheroes and the sidekicks. Yeah. And so to do that, I actually have a bit of a game because so much of this show, it's supposed to be Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and also Jimmy Olsen, is about Jimmy. And this particular episode is about them trying to find Jimmy Olsen, right? Yes. And so I was curious because I knew like with all the comic books over the years, he was going to have some interesting backstories, like multiple ones. And I wanted to see whether or not you'd be able to tell which is real based off what I'm about to tell you. Okay. So in 1952, that's when the television series Adventures of Superman came out and it had a co-star of Jack Larson who originally played Jimmy Olsen. I think he appeared in the comic books uh, like in the 40s and then it took a while before they named him but largely because of the popularity of Larson playing him that he got his own like comic book um, what is it called? Series? Yeah it was his own series kind of spinoff thing like Superman was in it but it was about Jimmy Olsen and I think it was called if I have the name here Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen and <laughs> it's like the slapstick adventure uh, and he'd like go through strange transformations. They basically barbified him. And by that, I mean, um, you know how Barbie like has what, like 50 different outfits, outfits and like yeah. characters that she plays. They did the same thing with him. Can you tell me, I'm going to give you five here. Which one is fake? I, I, I'm 100% certain you're going to get this wrong. Ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. And one of the comics, he became giant turtle man. And <laughs> it's actually Jimmy's most uh, frequently cited transformation because of how ridiculous it is. He turns into a giant turtle. Okay. Um, there's also Elastic Lad. As Elastic Lad, Jimmy, by a serum or by an alien virus, could sometimes stretch himself akin to the recently int- reintroduced um, Plastic Man. Okay. That seems like the Fantastic Four uh, superhero, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then, but that's that's Marvel, right? Yeah. Um, and then Super Jimmy is in Light Age comics. The roles were reversed. For from him and Superman, Krypton survives, 
and receives a baby from Earth, which was Jimmy Olsen, and he quickly grew to become the strongest individual in Krypton. Okay, yeah. I, you, you know, because Superman gets weaker when he's around his home planet. No, I get it. So, it's, it's the opposite yeah. way around. Yeah. And then there was Gorilla Jimmy, which is Jimmy switching minds with a gorilla, which I thought was prescient to this episode, which is because this Monster was about... Mala, there's an ape in it, yeah. Yeah, but instead, Jimmy just goes to work and, and he is a gorilla. <laughs> he still does the same thing. He reports in his uh, his clothes and he's, he's just a gorilla. There's also Super Brain, which is Jimmy briefly evolving into a man of the future with superhuman mental powers and you're saying one so of one of these is fake. fake i'll run them down real quick G okay. a giant turtle man elastic lad super jimmy gorilla jimmy or super brain which one of those is fake i'm going to go with gorilla man no nope, gorilla think? gorilla jimmy is 100 percent true it was super jimmy there was no time that he was actually i was really hoping that that one was going to be true this was my first time that i was introduced to jimmy i thought they might have just added him to this tv show as you like a never new heard character of jimmy i had before? never heard of jimmy even in like smallville no i have a story about smallville let's jump into the cast a little bit so smallville you know the ashmore who ashmore is sean ashmore or no, Aaron Ashmore? No. Okay, I didn't know that they were two separate people. I always saw this one guy, the, the Iceman from X-Men, the one who was in that Frozen right, movie. Right, that right, right, right. He was also in The Boys, connection to Jack Quaid, um, mm -hmm. as Lamplighter. But he's actually a different person. He's twin brothers with the guy from Killjoys, Lock and Key, and Smallville playing Jimmy Olsen. They're, they look so. exactly the same. I don't know who... You know who I'm talking yes, about, Yes, right? yeah, yeah. So you're saying... Two separate people. The person from The Boys and the person who played Jimmy Olsen, they look exactly alike, and one worked with Jack Quaid before. But so both the Ashmore twins yes. are connected to Superman somehow. I, I guess. How does... I, I guess if you want to make the connection with Jack Quaid, yes. Um, it, I just found that pretty entertaining, but obviously you have the main character, Kal-El, played by Jack Quaid. Another thing I learned in my research is that Simon Pegg, who plays Jack Quaid's father in, in The Boys, the boys yeah. was originally who they, when they made The Boys comic, yeah. they based it off the image of Simon Pegg. Oh, like the main character? Yeah, if you look at the comics, yeah, it looks I, like no, Simon I've Pegg. Read, I've read the comics, and now that you say that, I definitely make that it connection. It was made with him. This is mind. really Jimmy's episode, though. That's the thing. Uh, he gets kidnapped at the very beginning of it by Monsera Mala and a paranoid robot named Brain. However, Brain just seemed like he was Kevin from Final Space. In fact, it was almost like they were just ripping off Final Space completely. Oh, so he he's is a little dorky. He is a floating ball. The only difference is he's French, and he's a little bit more paranoid than Kevin usually is but he's a floating yellow ball he has a big eye in the center of himself he has some arms he even has the suit that kevin has in season one i think it was episode nine mm -hmm. that like he can get in and, and suddenly his arms and his legs become bigger and he's able to like control it and move it around for sure yeah. it, it seemed like it was just insane how how similar those two characters were but they are my favorite monster mala and the brain because i was actually learning the most about them and i was most like connected to them i thought yeah i mean they mixed up their story a bit because now they're supposed to be more nice <laughs> than they're the villains usually they're usually going after doom patrol or the titans but in this it's supposed to be a little bit different well right? the ape is the one that's really nice to jimmy but i found their backstory so strange because like midway through we learn about them and apparently the brain was a scientist yes. like a human scientist uh -huh. and uh and they were working for task force x which i guess is just this really big evil you know task force x it's another version it's... of suicide squad i think it even is ran ran by uh Amanda Waller's like um, daughter, maybe I'm not sure. And they're and they're doing technology, but apparently Task Force X really wanted to focus on evil technology. And when they learned that this scientific lab was not doing that, they decided to I guess like bust it down and try and end the operation. It the, sounds like a Harley Quinn thing, where like the bad guys can't decide what they want to do, and one has more of a heart than the other, and so like she ends up uh, destroying the whole entire plot. Well, no, the thing is, is that the brain when yes. he was a human and the ape. He has always been an ape. They they were just trying to like kind of figure out technology advancements, not for the evil purposes. It was Task Force X that came out of nowhere and just decided to shut their so whole you don't sense any nefariousness down. at all about them. Like even when Clark Kent shows up or or, or Superman shows no, up, no, these to save these Jimmy. characters and I, I I honestly that's a pro for the show. When Task Force X shuts down the operation, they open this door, there's this big black hole, and then it seems like everybody either dies, except for the brain, who was human, and then he gets, like, transported into that yellow ball, but the strangest uh, story choice that I thought they made was that Mala and the brain are together. 
Mm-hmm. Like they actually, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they call people each other People have compared it to The Last of Us, the the one with Nick Offerman, where they kind of like, it was, it's just supposed to kind of um, keep you on your toes. No, well, I'm kidding. It, it's supposed to be like, um, I, I don't know. It, it didn't, it didn't make story. sense. He's a, he's an ape. He was always an ape. <laughs> yeah, if that's, he, that's if a little he odd. Was, if he was a human scientist, love I would no, understand. Love knows no bounds. But I yeah, yeah. I mean, so suddenly, somehow, they ended up being two, uh, two people that are together, but they're, I guess, trying to figure out how exactly they can go to different dimensions using the black hole that they were working on so how did jimmy get even wrapped up in all that like why was he there because originally lois and clark are supposed to be so in, like, fighting lois, because yes actually that reminded me a lot of nancy and uh and jonathan, jonathan in season one uh like i think it was episode five you remember that argument so just scene? relationship drama because yeah it's it was weird that they decided to go with a will they won't they dynamic with superman because lois lane and superman obviously kind of have to end up together i found it a little strange i know it was kind of an homage to the Dean Kane version of it because they did the same exact thing there but here it just seemed like it was kind of it's it's obvious they're gonna have to be together I mean it reminded me of Inci- Invincible a lot where the main character in that is uh is, is trying to um make friends with uh what's her face I, if flower girl like what, what was her nature lady you know who I'm talking about the green one right yes yeah right but here it's it's Lois actually why is she angry at him again though like she's angry at him. So that was yeah. It was yeah. like the previous episode. And I was trying to figure out, but I don't think that they ever explicitly. Okay, then said. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know. I think it's because she found out that he was Superman. <laughs> That's, that's, I think the that's the main yes, reason. Because yeah. by the end of the first episode, I watched the first episode of the series just to get a good grasp on it. She's talking about how she's really excited that she's going to be able to interview Superman because they want to try and get their job into the Daily uh, Planet. But here, she already knows. Jimmy doesn't. Lois accidentally uh, stands Jimmy up. I guess that they were supposed to go camping at the very beginning of the episode. Okay. And then Clark goes to her apartment and they're like, Jimmy's gone. We don't know where he is. And that's when we get the reveal that Jimmy has been kidnapped this whole time entire time yeah i need to say do you know how they did the animation for this thing because this was really colorful and i thought that it was really cool like we don't usually get a lot of anime superheroes uh, i know it was produced by a lot of like other dc stuff that's been done in the past but not specifically now it just feels like so many cartoons these days rely on their animation being like superb to to stand out and so i wasn't like looking at the production that much well i like just how different it was mm-hmm. and i also i thought that jack quaid's voice was going to annoy me as superman i thought that i was only going to be able to see him as jack quaid but no it seems like the voice acting is really good for this show as well i mean he does do the lower decks he's like the second lead in that if you remember the one with tawny right um, star trek yeah yeah decks. and he even showed up in strange new worlds they, they had like a cameo appearance. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, the two main leads in that. And his dad, uh, Dennis Quaid, was considered for Jonathan Kent in Man of Steel. I, that wasn't him, obviously. But um, it, the whole cast is kind of interesting. You've got Lois Lane, who was in uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, Alice Lee. That's who she's from. But uh, Jimmy Olsen, back to him. Mm-hmm. I bet you won't know where you knew him from. He was one of the jurors in Jury Duty. Wait, so I didn't know that people from Jury Duty actually yeah, went on Yeah, you read for this during different... the pandemic. And so it, it's just like, and also um, Mala, right? That's his name. He yeah. was King Boomy from Avatar. I knew that, yeah, I knew that they had to probably get some voice actors that were pretty famous. But King Boomy is like one of the few characters I remember from that show <laughs> when you made me watch it. Yeah. Um, and then did, did Speaking you of it? which, though, this is shown on Adult Swim, and mm-hmm. you said, Max, I did not understand why this wasn't shown on Cartoon Network. This is TVPG, and sorry for the I old I think it's all under the same umbrella, right? No, but it's it's shown on Adult Swim. That's that's the difference. I feel like Adult Swim, you have things like Royal Crackers, you have Family Guy, you have really off-putting kind of cartoons so, that are definitely for an adult audience. Here, though, and forgive the old references because I haven't watched Cartoon Network in well over 10 years, but you have, like, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and even Total Drama Island episodes. Episodes, I feel like that were worse content wise than this was. I, I see what you're saying. I, I I don't have an answer for you for that. I do have another game if you want to play the the Jimmy game again with more characters. I mean, sure, go okay. ahead. Okay, all right. There's Speed Demon in 1956, a month before the debut of Barry Allen as the new Flash. Jimmy drank a potion produced by Professor Claude and briefly gained super speed. That might be false. Uh-huh. Monstrous beard growth. The machinations of a sinister beard band caused Jimmy to grow an immense beard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Morbi- yes, morbidly obese Jimmy is Jimmy tried to get fat in an attempt to stop a jewel smuggler and to impress a circus of fat a circus fat lady. 
Uh-huh. So there's a monstrous beard, a morbidly obese, a speed demon, and then a Viking Jimmy, which is Jimmy put on Viking armor and mistakenly believed that he had transported a thousand years backward in time. I don't even understand how that would be a superhero. Um, and then there's Dr. Jimmy, which is a 1966 issue where an experiment went wrong. A hospital is flooded with tricolor viruses. Armed with vitamin capsules, Jimmy neutralizes the outbreak. I will go with Dr. Jimmy. Yes, because that is just <laughs> Dr. Mario. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, was, I was thinking Doctor Who until you read the description for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, well, I knew that that was going to be an easier one, but at the same time, they had a, an issue with him getting a monstrous beard. I just, I love, I love the old-timey comics when they could just do anything they wanted. <laughs> but going back to the show, I don't understand why we never see Superman in his super suit. We see him in the intro, the intro I quite like, by the way, and we see him at the very beginning where they show the DC symbol, but they never actually show him in the two episodes that I watched for this show, actually in, like, a, yeah, his full getup. Well, he's not completely developed into Superman yet, right? Well, I, but, but the poster even shows him in his Superman suit, yeah. and we don't, we don't even really see him fly, but there was more of a reason for that. When Lois and Clark go into this, like, magnetic field, it nerfs Superman's abilities, and I thought to myself that that was going to be kind of cool. We were going to really be seeing Superman at a disadvantage because they're being chased by giant killer robots. They're being chased by giant oh, killer Max. robots. Yes, in the first episode as well. So I thought that they were just kind of, it was like a little red. I think Task Force X is just after him constantly. So but, yeah. but like he's still super strong. He ends up making it to the compound and it's, they like have to fight. Everyone fights. You have the ape, you have the yellow ball, Again, you have Jimmy. Everybody why, ends up Why fighting. is Jimmy there though? Like you still have an answer because he wasn't kidnapped. Why did he follow the brain, the brain and the ape there? How he did he get there? Fall. He was trying, he was thinking that there was government secrets in the place that he was going into because oh, so he went into um, Mark territory. I, I mean, he he he's says that on his phone, case. and then you have the brain, and the brain thinks that he's like an intruder, someone that's trying to like gain information, a spy basically, and so that's why they tie him up. But then they end up trusting him by the end. It seemed really, really kid friendly, almost too kid friendly. I'm not saying that every show, every animated superhero show for that matter, has to be Harley Quinn with like the sex references, the language, the violence. But this seemed like it was like bordering on TV Y seven because you have uh, as I, as so you're not the target audience we get it yeah. as i was saying at the very end of the episode you have all of the characters fighting but during this you have lois uh clark kent and jimmy and they're all talking about during this fight how they really should be better friends to one another and how they really should just start trusting one so it's another it's like a captain planet episode it, yes, yes it, it felt almost entirely like that and then okay. clark kent says at the very end of the episode once they're able to fight off all of the robots that uh he tells jimmy that he's superman and it didn't even seem like it was really that big a part of the episode but you know if your best friend is telling you that they're superman you think that you'd be more mad about it well they tried to go with the excuse that jimmy somehow knew about it it reminded me a lot of spider-man no yeah, way people people really like that they said that the that was the biggest twist to them is that jimmy must have known this entire time and that people were gonna go we watch all six episodes thus far just but to he see says it he says it straight out and it seems like that it, it, it almost a, robbed it of an i feel like an emotional moment well i feel like in the whole episode since Lois found out she's been so mad about it where when it's supposed to show the contrast where with Jimmy he was just like you know what I was cool I was waiting until you told me. It just me. reminded me of Spider-Man Far From Home when uh when Mary Jane ends up figuring out that he's Spider-Man and then like it just seemed like they were playing it off as a joke. Yeah like and, she's so cool that she doesn't need it. <laughs> yeah like and it, I just I didn't really buy it that much and I felt like the show itself even though it was nostalgic kind of with the Saturday morning cartoon vibe I feel like it was almost Mismarketed, which is a con because when I heard that there was going to be an Adult Swim Superman show and that it was going to be somewhat anime and you have Jack Quaid as like the, as the main voice, uh -huh. I thought we were that you can take this story in so many different directions. And from at least the two episodes that I watched of this thing, it feels like they really didn't do that much. I mean, with again, it. build as a rom com with punching, so it wasn't build as like we're going to be so. Deep but then with why the make book. it Superman if you're not even going to have Superman? He's always been the idealistic like uh, nice guy as opposed to 
some of the darker superheroes. But you don't even get even that many characters in the sixth episode. For example, you only get the five characters and and like two that show up at the very end, Doctor Ivo and the General, who are supposed to be the main villains. They Uh find the place. The the only story beat that I thought that really worked for the show was that the ape and brain actually and do go into a different dimension to be more accepted. It's kind of like Doctor Strange, where she can go into different multiverses and she. Yeah, well, that that was their main plan. They were trying to figure out because so many people are freaked out by them like go into yeah. a planet where they'd be accepted and i thought that that part of the episode worked the best and the symbolism too obviously right the homosexuality so, right yeah. but it's like except for that i didn't feel like the story was anything new it goes at a lightning fast pace but i just feel like for every pro that there was for this show there's a con that you can come up with so right what's your final this. rating i'm going to have to go middle of the road and i'm going to say a five out of ten it's nicely animated it features superman it's fast paced has a couple of good scenes and i feel like the voice acting is fine but it's just overly familiar as a story and i feel like they could get so much more done if they were to just really focus and make these stories more interesting all right all right well thanks for listening we'll see you on the next episode hope you enjoyed this one bye bye